You are watching every TV. Welcome to English News Broadcast, and these are the headlines for today. Twenty-eight patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19, and tests are carried out today. Seminar conducted to nationals in Johannesburg. Russian submarine successfully launched a caliber cruise missile from the Sea of Japan. U.S. sanctions against Chinese people. On the local news, we have an announcement from the Ministry of Health. 28 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests is carried out today at quarantine centers and testing stations in the central and southern regions. Out of this, 25 patients are from quarantine center 6 and testing station 19 in Asmara central region. Three patients are from testing station in Dubarwa southern region. On the other hand, 14 patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the central region have recovered fully and have been discharged from these facilities. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly increased to 7,580, while the number of deaths stands at 70. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 7,807. Ministry of Health, Asmara, December 21, 2021. Eritrean ambassador to South Africa and South African countries, Mr. Saleh Umer, conducted seminar to, na to nationals residing in Johannesburg and its environs. At the seminar, Ambassador Saleh gave extensive briefing on the objective situation in the homeland, regional developments, as well as on the set-out programs for 2022. The participants on their part expressed readiness to strengthen organizational capacity and participation in the national affairs. Ambassador Saleh also gave proper answer to questions raised by the participants of the seminar. Eritrean nationals in Israel conducted Activity Assessment Meeting of 2021 and charted out programs for 2022. According to the Eritrean Embassy in Israel, at the event, the nationals contributed $45,867 in support of families of martyrs and $77,550 in support of the National Association of Eritrean War Disabled Veterans, and $61,147 in support of the effort to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Nationals also discussed on the charted out programs for 2022 and expressed resolve to play due part in the implementation of the program. The National Union of Eritrean Youth and Student in cooperation with the Culture and Sports Department in the Southern Region, organized training on administration and leadership. The objective of the training was to develop the capacity of youth on cultural and sport activities and enable them play due part in their development. The head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students Branch in the region, Mr. Girmay Gavru, said that the training will have significant contribution in the development of cultural and sports activities in the region. Mr. Abraham Johannes, Director General of Culture and Sports in the region, said that similar training programs will be organized with a view to develop the understanding of the youth on their culture and history, and called on the trainees to play due part in the effort to develop cultural and sports activities in the region. Do stay with us for international news after the short break. Welcome back. A, a submerged Russian submarine has successfully launched a caliber cruise missile from the Sea of Japan 
at a target more than a thousand kilometers away, located at a Russian training ground onshore, the Russian Defense Ministry said today. Furthermore, the ministry said in a statement that the drill also involved covert movement and support from military ships, sorry, military ships, aircraft, and drones. Japan lays claim to the Russian-held southern Korean islands in the nearby Sea of Okhotsk, which Tokyo refers to as the Northern Territories, in a territorial row dating from the end of World War II when Soviet troops seized them from Japan. The dispute has prevented the two countries from signing a formal peace treaty. Today, China's foreign ministry si said four people from the United States Commission of on International Religious Freedom would be banned from mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau in response to U.S. sanctions against Chinese people and entities on December 10. The assets of the sanctioned individuals, the chair, vice chair, and two commissioners of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom in China will also be frozen, and Chinese institutions and citizens will be forbidden from dealing with them, said Foreign Ministry spokesman Jiao Wu Lijing at a regular briefing in Beijing. The U.S. said that its sanctions were in response to human rights abuse in China, Xinjiang region, where Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities are alleged to have been unlawfully detained, mistreated, and forced to work. China denies abuse in Xinjiang and says its policies there help combat extremism. The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom is a federal government entity which evaluates and suggests policies for countries where religious freedom is deemed to be endangered. And now a reminder of today's headlines. Twenty-eight patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests is carried out today. Seminar conducted to nationals in Johannesburg. Russian submarine successfully launched a caliber cruise missile from the Sea of Japan. U.S. sanctions against Chinese people. That was all for today. Thanks for watching.